Patrick Henningsen and TNT. All right, ladies and gentlemen, all right, welcome to the program. I'm your host, Patrick Henningsen. We're live and direct uh, for the next hour here on TNT. We'll go to the biggest stories right now in the world. And uh, when I saw this headline uh, in the last 24 hours, you know, it made me sad. And I can't think of a bigger story, more impactful story. Now, we haven't been covering the situation in Gaza in the Middle East so much because we've been drawn into other things, the elections in Europe, France, UK, the United States, etc. And for good reason, these are all consequential and important political stories to cover. But this story really blew me away. It takes a lot to put me back on my heels with all the stuff that we see day in, day out, all the stuff we have access to that we cover. Uh, this, unfortunately, is sad. It's tragic beyond belief. There's a study done by the peer-reviewed journal uh, called The Lancet, The Lancet in the UK. They did a forensic study on the true death toll in Gaza. Now, the numbers have been thrown around by Euromonitor and others. On the high-end Euromonitor, we're talking about 42,000. Uh, innocent civilians killed by the Israelis in Gaza of those half of women and children, roughly. Now, the numbers that I'm about to unveil to you, this is a scientific study, which arguably is going to be more accurate than even some of the uh, organizations on the ground, like the Euro, the, the Euro Monitor organization, other NGOs. Why? Because it's taking into account the full spectrum of everything, including deaths, injuries, excess deaths, deaths of despair, all the stuff that's coming in, the chronic uh, illnesses, the injury, etc., direct results of the Israeli military attack on the Palestinian people. When disease and hunger are taken into account, say the Lancet, their research team has found that this conflict will have claimed 186,000. Let me repeat that for one moment. 186,000 Palestinian lives at the hands of the Israelis. That's the number that we're looking at. This is the number that we're talking about, the true death toll, ladies and gentlemen. And we've had guests on this show saying this exact thing in the last couple of weeks. They were right, 186,000. Roughly five times higher than the accepted official toll that's continued to be pushed out in the media that doesn't seem to have gotten very very much higher in the last six months, even though we've seen day in, day out, stories of the Israelis bombing refugee camps, killing people by the hundreds on almost a weekly basis. How could the number have not risen? And yet it has. And by orders of magnitude, five times higher than the 37,000 plus reported last month. We're talking about what's in Gaza. The Lancet study, as of June 19th, according to the Gaza Ministry of Health data there, official data, it's not Hamas data, those are Palestinian international medical professions. That's who runs the Gaza Ministry of Health, not Hamas. So while the Israeli government has long disputed the ministry's figures, claiming it was Hamas propaganda, which itself is one of the most egregious injustices of this whole discussion, but Israel's able to get away with that. Why? Because they seem to act with total impunity. But despite that, they are accepted as reliable by the United Nations, as they have in previous conflicts. Same data source. So why would it be any different? Of course it's not. They've quietly acknowledged this is the true count in Israel. They can't argue with it. But according to this new team of British, American, and Canadian researchers with The Lancet, the true number will reach 186,000 Palestinians. Those are direct and indirect deaths. When we say indirect, we're talking about injuries that then become deaths. We're talking about excess deaths. The fact that Israel has targeted and destroyed and continues to, even this week, has destroyed almost every hospital in Gaza servicing 2.5 million people. This is going to have a brutal knock-on effect in terms of excess deaths. Anybody who says that it's not, uh, I really 
They're not serious people at the end of the day. And this is what the study shows. I'll quote from the Lancet here in recent conflicts, such indirect deaths range from three to 15 times higher than the number of direct deaths, says the Lancet, applying a conservative estimate to four indirect deaths per one direct death to the at the uh, accepted average of 37,396 deaths currently reported, it is not implausible to estimate now that up to 186,000 Palestinians, or even more than that, could be attributed and will be attributed to the current conflict in Gaza. Population 2.3 million, some of those have moved into Egypt at a great cost, mind you, because of corruption and being having to pay people to pass over the border, which is shameful in itself for the Egyptians. That said, this is the true picture. So this could easily swell to over 300,000. So when we're having a discussion about what's civilized and what's acceptable in the 21st century, and I'm talking about 200,000 Palestinians have been killed by the Israelis, does that jar anybody? Does that move the dial? We're only eight months in to this military operation. Does that does that trigger anyone? Do you think that's a cause for concern? If we said that was 200,000 Israeli deaths, what would the righteous indignation outrage globally be, especially in the West, throughout the G7 countries? What would the reaction be? There would almost certainly be comparisons to the Holocaust in World War II, but that's not happening here. Why is that? Is that because the Arab or the Palestinian life is somehow regarded as less valuable or doesn't count or is acceptable collateral damage in the fight against terrorism? What exactly are we talking about here? Is this really being debated seriously in our mainstream media at the highest levels of politics? Because this is a genocide. This is an ongoing genocide. Truth be known, it began in 1948. It's only intensified in the last eight months. That's the truth of it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking to you with historical perspective and the real politic of what's actually going on in the ground. But that's not a popular viewpoint, is it, when it comes to mainstream media and this subject? It certainly isn't. And that's the problem. That's the problem. That's why this persists. That's why it's continuing. It's because of this reason. It's because of this reason. What on earth will it take for people to wake up? What sort of number are they waiting for? Are you waiting for 500,000? Are you waiting for a million? Will you, will you be jarred or awakened at 1.5 million or 2 million? What does it take? At what point do Palestinian lives lost en masse become a problem for the human race? on this planet in 2024? Simple question, we're putting it out there. We hope there's an answer coming from higher echelons of politics, and it better be, because time is running out. People are dying as we speak. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a break right now with TNT, today's news talk, and when we come back, we'll talk to our guest, journalist based in the Middle East, Gaddy Francis. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> 